Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A gruesome investigation is unfolding on Detroit's east side after a woman's body was found in an abandoned home. And all eyes on 4 Live Radar in the skies as Brandon tracks the potential for severe weather. When the trouble could impact you. Breaking news and some good news tops our show at noon. Oakland County's Health Division declaring an end to the largest measles outbreak in decades. 40 of the 44 confirmed cases in Michigan happened in Oakland with sick patients ranging from 8 months to 63 years old. The outbreak started in March. Since then, more than 3,300 measles vaccinations were administered in 17 special clinics. Also breaking now at noon, an Ohio doctor now facing 25 murder charges for allegedly prescribing deadly doses of painkillers. William Hustle is accused of giving excessive doses of opioids to patients who were already near death. A six-month investigation exposed alleged medical malpractice involving more than 30 employees. Hustle was suspended back in November and then fired a few weeks later. All right, let's turn our attention to the weather. That is a big story. Brandon tracking the potential for severe weather as we take a look outside and those skies are pretty cloudy. Brandon, when will it all affect us? Gloomy looking and if anything, these clouds may actually help us. If we had a little more sun, numbers would be a lot warmer and the warm, steamy atmosphere bubbles up and fires off storms. So we're hoping to hold a lot of that off. It probably won't be the case all day. 73 degrees right now and you can see radar is not very active. Again, without a ton of sun, we don't get the activity of especially severe weather, which is a OK, but numbers will be warming and between now and 5 or 6 p.m. It's eyes to the skies. I wish I had a precise time, but I think around 2 o'clock, especially and beyond, we'll need to watch out for some strong to maybe severe weather as we are under this marginal risk of a weak risk for severe weather. The worst of it is down to our south. Karen, we're talking about storms that will produce some down Downpours and lightning could produce large hail and damaging wind. I'll have more coming up. All right, thank you, Brandon. Developing this noon, a woman's body is found inside a vacant house on Detroit's east side. You're looking at video of the active police scene. Now, that house is along Mack Avenue, just west of Mount Elliott, as you can see on this map. Let's get right out to Coco McAvoy. Coco, what have you found out? So Karen, the details are limited at this time because police are not able to identify the woman, but the investigation is all unfolding at this house here on Mac on Detroit's east side. That's where the woman's body was found this morning, and now police are trying to determine how she died. Inside of this house near Mac and Mount Elliott, police made a gruesome discovery this morning. They found a naked woman dead inside of this abandoned house and believe she'd been in there for a few days. Man, I got nieces and kids that be around here in the morning and stuff that go to school, you know? People who live in the area watched as police looked for clues in this case. I seen a bunch of police cars, a homicide there, and tape. I seen a lot of tape. There were no obvious signs of foul play to the woman, but police say the fact that she was found naked takes this case to another level. Her face was decomposed, so now police are trying to identify her and determine how she died. I send my condolences out to her family because, you know what I'm saying, we all got loved ones. And police say they cannot rule out an overdose at this time. They're waiting on toxicology reports and autopsy reports to help identify this woman. We'll, of course, keep track of this story. Back to you. All right, thank you, Coco. The former sheriff's deputy assigned to the Florida school where 17 people were killed in a shooting appeared in court this morning. Scott Peterson was charged on 11 counts for his inaction as the school's armed guard during that shooting. A 15 month investigation concluded Peterson did nothing to investigate the source of the gunshots and retreated away from the gunfire. If convicted of all charges, Peterson could face life in prison. Virginia Beach authorities have yet to confirm why a former city employee went on a fatal shooting spree last week. Some say the gunman appeared to target supervisors who worked in his department. A Virginia Beach councilman says the gunman passed various employees before opening fire. That gunman was an engineer with the city's Department of Public Utilities. He resigned just hours before opening fire on his former co-workers. 
75 years ago tomorrow, the Allies invaded Normandy during World War II, codenamed Operation Neptune, often referred to as D-Day. It was the largest seaborne invasion in history. The operation began the liberation of German-occupied German France and later Europe from Nazi control and laid the foundations of the Allied victory on the Western Front. Jay Gray reports from Normandy, France, where the ceremony is set to begin in just hours. Good afternoon. You know, the commitment, the courage, and the sacrifice of so many from D-Day is evident, really overwhelming from the moment you set foot on these solemn grounds. Today, those soldiers, sailors, and airmen honored from the place where tens of thousands left for the invasion, Portsmouth, England, President Trump, the Queen of England, and dignitaries from all of the allied nations gathering as part of a elaborate ceremony there, one to honor the survivors and remember those who gave their lives. President Trump today reading from a prayer that President Franklin D. Roosevelt shared in a radio address during the invasion. They will need thy blessings, for the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces, but we shall return again and again. And we know that by thy grace and by the righteous of our cause, our sons will triumph. Final preparations underway here, and you can feel a bit of a tension with the crews trying to get things together, wanting to make sure that everything goes off just as planned, that things are perfect here to honor so many who gave their lives. That is the latest from here in Normandy, France. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you now. All right, thank you, Jay. Meantime, the president has a busy agenda as he continues his trip overseas. As Jay mentioned, today he is taking part in a D-Day commemoration in southern England, later traveling to Ireland to meet the Irish prime minister. Tomorrow, the president will be in France for ceremonies marking the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion of Europe. Meantime, President Trump not backing down from his threat to impose tariffs on Mexico. Trump in tweets from Great Britain calling on Mexico to improve its immigration enforcement. Otherwise, a 5% tariff on all Mexican goods goes into effect Monday. Today, Mexican officials will seek to persuade the White House in talks hosted by Vice President Mike Pence that their government has done enough to stem immigration. Meantime, some Republicans are speaking out against Trump's tariffs. Well, there is uh, not much support in my conference for tariffs, that's for sure. This industry will not be able to survive in its current form with the increasing number of tariffs from Mexican goods. Meantime, more battles with Congress as the White House is directing former communications director Hope Hicks and former deputy counsel Annie Donaldson not to turn over documents requested by a House subpoena. Now, that subpoena is part of the committee's investigation into possible abuse of power by President Trump and members of his administration. Still to come this noon, President Trump says he had a long conversation with Britain's Prince Charles on climate change. Have his views on the topic shifted? Plus a group of young people suing the Trump administration, what they're saying violates their constitutional rights. What's it like to be on top of the world? No, I mean on top of the world. This local man has just returned from two months abroad, climbing Mount Everest, and he actually made it to the very top. Today at four on First at Four, he will tell us what it was like, what he saw, and why he thinks so many people are dying to climb Mount Everest. The moments are here, and so are we. Every day, as new moments happen, see what it all means. See how they affect you. Local 4 News at 5 and 6, the moments are here.